you son of a bitch, you left the bodies and you only moved the headstones! You only moved the headstones! Why? Why? <laughs>gonna hit start record and say hello everyone are you ready to join the band because it's time to head to the concession stand that's actually what our theme song says that's not how we start things off zen how you doing uh, it's, good good it's been literal months since the last time we talked to each other in a video it has actually been a really long time that's what happens when you stop playing the same games yeah, and you, do, and you don't have a house anymore to call that your too. own. <laughs> also, lack of home. Uh, that'll get to you, but it's okay, because my lack of home won't stop the fact that it's spooky season, and that can only mean one thing. It's time to the return to the annual, and now increasingly the only time we do concession stand the spooktacular. It's the only... It's, we, we need to do this, and then we need to do a Christmas movie one in December. Yeah, and that's it all year. Because those are the d easily two of our most favorite just times. For one, just enjoying Christmas movies and also enjoying any horror movies during the month of during respective months. Yes, Christmas movies are such a special kind of of hell. But yeah, anyway, scary yeah. movies. Scary movies. So today is we're going to be doing two episodes. Today we're going to be focusing on Poltergeist, and then at the end of this episode, we'll tell you what the next one will be so you can prepare for it. So if you actually want to watch the movie, you can actually stop the video, click off the video, then come back later, because that gives me more views, I think. And so <laughs> go pull up, pull up Netflix. I think that does count as two, yeah. Yeah, I don't care. Like, I don't care what the minutes watched, three minutes, anyone who wasn't already into this stopped watching about 30 seconds ago. <laughs> so I need more views. Um, pull up Poltergeist, it's on Netflix, you can watch it. Everyone has Netflix at this point, and if you don't, then you can bootleg it somewhere. Uh, so yeah, you can watch it, and then we're gonna, we're gonna go over the movie and then give our thoughts during it, just to give some background on what Poltergeist is. Poltergeist was, is, was directed by Toby Hooper. A lot of people will tell you that it was actually directed by Steven Spielberg. This is not actually the case. Uh, Toby Hooper has had to, for years, fight back the fact that he, he directed his own movie and it was not Spielberg. Um, but the only That's reason... what happens when you have Spielberg on your project in the 80s. Yeah, it's true. But to be fair, uh, Spielberg did want to direct this movie, but he just didn't have the time because it was Spielberg in the 80s. So he had Toby Hooper direct it, and he occasionally showed up on set to kind of look at things. And then one reporter saw Spielberg behind the camera and he said, It's a lie. It's not Toby Hooper. It's actually Steven Spielberg. And Toby Hooper was like, Aw, <laughs> no, that, that's, that's not fair. <laughs> and Toby Hooper, if you don't know, was also the director for the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So he's a horror legend as far as directors go. Yep, yep. What was interesting about this that I didn't know that I uh, I had only learned after looking into it after you said you wanted to watch it was that apparently it was supposed to be an alien movie. Yeah, it was supposed. And they to... were like, "No, that's dumb." <laughs> yeah, he the Toby Hoover not the biggest fan of sci-fi stuff. Uh, from what I remember, he did end up making one sci-fi movie, but for the most part, he's like, "No, nah, ghosts are scarier than aliens." Uh. Because I guess, I guess that's true. It is, if I had the choice between fighting an alien or a ghost, I would much rather fight an alien. I feel like I could take down an alien pretty easily. Meanwhile, ghosts, no. No deal. Zen, are you there? Oh, did I lose internet connection? That'd be great if it turned out I did. I totally did. Yeah, I can't imagine how many times you must have to restart YouTube uploads. I, 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 get, I, I, I do it off my phone now. It takes too long. If I do it the natural way, a one, one Dragalia video would take close to, I think, one hour as opposed to five God. minutes by using phone data. That That's miserable. Yeah. Uh, and that's with the recent changes to making it not look like shit, too. So I've had specific, like, quality of life stuff added to the YouTube channel. And it's like, 
Well, this makes my life more difficult, but if people, if like slightly more people like it, then I guess that's the way it's going to go. Yeah, such, such as being a content creator. Yes. All right, let's get back to the, the episode now. So as I was saying, I would much rather fight a ghost as opposed to an alien. No, I would much rather fight an alien. I think I could take down an alien and not a ghost, though. I don't know, because when I think 80s aliens, I think like invaders from Mars, not like alien even though I should be thinking of, like, Alien when I'm thinking oh. 80s Aliens. I don't know why, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. They just don't they don't freak me out that much, mm, except yeah. for, like, Alien. Alien is a good one, but other than that, it's just, like, yeah. skinny gray dudes with big eyes. D- to be honest, I would actually not want to fight the Predator or the Xenomorph. <laughs> one, because the Xenomorph well, is just... Okay. <laughs> They're just not fair. There's just the the predator. First of all, would not want to fight me because he's looking for a fight, and he would take one look and go, "No, I don't think so." Kind of move somewhere else. And the xenomorph, I I'm just not a fan of his entire spiel. <laughs> I'm not a fan of the way he fights. That's <laughs> that's fair. Uh, cheap yeah. tactics. We're not about that. Exactly. Um, so continuing on, uh, th- yeah, so it originally was going to be aliens and then they decided, no, ghosts are going to be better. Right. It was supposed to be like a horror sequel to Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Yeah, I think it was actually supposed to be literally a sequel to Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Mm. And then Hooper was like, I don't want to do that. <laughs> you know, it's way scarier. <laughs> ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> hear, hear me out, Spielberg. Ghosts. And, and Spielberg, apparently he did. Yeah, and Spielberg would not was not at his peak power, so he did he couldn't do the move of excuse me, I'm Steven Spielberg. Uh, why don't you shut the fuck up and direct this movie? <laughs> Just shut up and do what I say. Yeah, he had not quite hit that point yet. No, and the it, this movie was what 1982, 83. Yeah, it to be fair, it's right around the time where he started. It was like after ET, I think. It had uh, to be after. Uh, Oh, it was right during the filming of E.T. That's why he couldn't direct it. It's because he was also directing E.T. and they had something in his contract that said you can't um, make E.T. and another movie. So that's why he got it. I wonder everyone thought that Spielberg was secretly directing this one because... Yeah. It, it, for sense. all in case and purposes, he was going to direct it until he could literally, under the contract, could not do it. Yeah, that's fair. That's that's a good reason not to do it. Yeah. Not that Poltergeist is a bad movie in any capacity. It's very oh, good. No. It, it's very good. So why, why don't you start it off? Start us off, son. Right, right. Okay, so uh, we've got... I don't. What is their last name? The Freeling family, and they live in a little community and... Uh, Steven, Steve, Steve Freely, he sells houses, and uh, they have like this, I don't know how to describe it in a way that, that doesn't sound stupid, but their littlest kid starts talking to the TV, and just like having a conversation with the TV, yeah. and like, that, that's weird that, that she's doing that. <laughs> she, the, uh, the, the, it's, it's really weird because it's like, the, the, the movie opens up with like... Uh, the Star Spangled Banner being pl- bl- blasted on a TV, um, which I guess was just something you back in the day before we had the constant news network, people would I guess just watch war movies <laughs> nonstop. So Pretty much. it was that or static, and eventually the little girl like wakes up. Like, f- well, first of all, it starts with a dog. You see the point of view of the dog is a dog wakes up everyone in the family in class in classic dog fashion, <laughs> going through every <laughs> single person for really no reason. Until finally like, he, go ahead. It sounds dumb, but like it's not. It, it's genuinely creepy when she's just sitting there, and it's just a, it's just a static signal on the TV. Yeah, and she's just talking to it, and it, it, it sounds like it shouldn't be scary, but it, it is genuinely like. Yeah, and, and you're not like little... afraid, but it's weird. It, it weirds you yeah. out. It was well shot. It's she, whole, she's like going like. Well shot. Yeah, she's like going yes, no. I can't see you. And then she's like speaking loudly as like a little kid would. And then over time, she's speaking so loudly that the entire family's waking up. And even though she sees the family, she's not stopping. And then eventually it ends with her going four, five, six. 
And then finally, it just she just stops and she touches the TV, and then you get fucking credits, and it's like, what? <laughs> what was anything that just happened right now? Right, yeah, and it, it's it, it's creepy, and then it cuts to the next night, and she's doing it again. Uh, she's talking to the TV again, and a, a the ghost the ghost doesn't come out of the TV, but they're like a like a creepy hand comes out of the TV. People would probably who haven't seen the movie would probably recognize the imagery if they saw it. Oh, because yeah, it's this... a pretty famous image of the the ghost coming out of the TV, uh, and then also the creepy uh, "they're here" line that yeah, everyone she... also knows. Yeah, she. There's a lot of lines in this movie that are very memorable for what for uh, from what I remember. Like a lot, like a lot of these quotes, I end up accidentally quoting, not knowing I was actually quoting Poltergeist until years later when I saw Poltergeist. <laughs> Uh, yeah, exactly. Like I, the they're here thing. I think a ton of people know that line and probably don't know it's from Poltergeist because yeah. it's just that that common. But uh, so after the, she has her second uh, interaction with the TV, uh, Poltergeist stuff starts happening. Like uh, just shit around their house starts going wrong. All of their shit gets like moved around and yeah, it's, it's like it, it starts it's like a ghost hunter show, but like it's real. Yeah, it's it starts first when the the like the sun picks up his juice and it just breaks out of nowhere, and then he go he goes like, "Huh, that's funny." And then he goes to pick up his spoon and his spoon is bent, and he's like, "What?" And he goes to pick up his fork and it's also bent, so he's just kind of really confused. And then the mom goes to be like, uh, "She returns to the kitchen and she goes, did you move the chair, honey?" Like the little girl's the only one in the in the haunted ass house at this point with her, and she goes, "Uh, uh-uh. uh." She goes, okay, I guess you kids are just fucking lazy. And she <laughs> she returns the chairs back to the proper position because she thought, like, oh, okay, obviously the kids just backed up. Perfectly reasonable. Everyone just backed away from their seat, didn't put it back in. Uh, and then it, like, follows her. She go- The camera follows her as she goes to the kitchen. And by the time you go back to the... It's, like, literally, I think, a 30-second shot. She goes back to the position of where the chairs were. And the chairs are in, like, these this crazy-ass position everywhere. <laughs> I don't know. Did this movie start that? Like, because cause the chair thing is kind of, it's like a stereotype now of like when you have a ghost, they always fucking stack your furniture on top of each other. Did that come from this? Or did this play off of that? It's hard to know because I think it's one of those things where I think this movie also kind of pays heed to a lot of other ghost stories. So it's kind of like one of those things of like, I think it's just taking to the next degree. It's like the first one to, in the modern age, to kind of put it inside everyone's head. Like, I don't think it's the first, but it's probably the, one of the more popular examples of something like this, of how that looks like. But yeah, I feel like um, it had to have been done at something else. There's like, there's been too many ghost stories in the millennia of people alive since the invention of the chair for this not to have happened somewhere else. <laughs> All right, that's that's fair. Uh, so that, yeah, all the weird stuff's happening and they're like, uh, you know, that's, that's weird. It, the, uh, the, w- the way I like it is that the mom's really pumped about this in a way that's actually kind of creepy because the husband comes home after, so the, the mom realizes something's wrong. And instead of doing like the average thing you would see in a horror movie where they go like, that's weird. And then they ignore it. The mom starts fucking experimenting in the kitchen. So when the husband comes home that night, he goes, honey, honey. She goes, honey, honey, you got to see this. And then she's like drawing chalks <laughs> on the floor of the kitchen. And the, the little girl's like, mommy didn't make dinner. He's like, we're going to get Pizza Hut later. Shut up. I'm doing something. Well, it's and funny because she, she's like a, she's like a housewife. She doesn't really do anything. Yeah, no, she doesn't. So I guess that, that was her like excitement in her day was... <laughs> was doing this ghost day yeah so she Uh, she starts getting real when a tree (laughs) literally like is looking in their window and then it straight up punches through the window (laughs) and then like full on it it punches through the window and it like cups the sun and its tree hands because it has tree hands yeah and slowly lifts him out of the bedroom uh, when the dad in his 80s white nightshirt that he sleeps in busts in the room. And he's like, ugh! And then when they pull the sun out of the room, the blinds go down. Yeah, It's like, the tree is weird, but it was genuinely kind of funny to me. It, just the tree, like the way it moved, was funny to me. There, it, there's a lot really of like... You tell it was two dudes with like sticks. Yes. Pushing the tree hands forward. 
but also how quick the tree was went like it's it's really hard to say like so a lot of, at this point a lot of creepy stuff is happening but it hasn't really escalated and then it goes from zero to 100 when the tree fucking punches the window yeah and it go- because all of the creepy stuff up to that point was like hmm what's uh, going on here that's weird and, it, and none of it was like an actual monster <laughs> and it's just a tree like a giant tree with like kind of a face it doesn't yeah. have like a full on face but it has enough of a face that it can like creep in their window for a minute yeah and then it just punches in the window and and then the craziest thing is ever is that the son who had the, before the they set this up so a lot of those scares in this are set up super early on and then they pay off in the dumbest way possible this is one of them where in the beginning of the movie the son is one climbing the tree and then at night he's terrified of the tree and he's going like I don't know, Dad. It looks like it's going to come in here. And the dad is very much like, son, the tree is not going to come into your house. So if I'm that kid and the tree has suddenly attacked me, my first thought is, well, my dad's a fucking liar. He promised me that this wouldn't happen. <laughs> He's very specifically promised me this would not happen. Yeah. And, the, and then the fucked up thing is that the tree is then trying to eat him. And the son's like, it's hitting me, Dad. <laughs> Like he's freaking the fuck out as is, as is the 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 father now has to reckon with I fucking I didn't expect this today I didn't expect my tree to suddenly attack my son to just attack my child yeah although props to that dad because he opens the door sees the tree pulling the child out of the window and is immediately like i gotta get outside and fight this tree (laughs) like there's no confusion or hesitation on his part whatsoever he looks in the room for all of two seconds and then just full on like captain america i know what i must do Uh, yeah he 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 does something a little bit uh like literally like 10 minutes later that also is kind of he's very much a man of action of kind of like well i have to do something he's like the the opposite of every horror movie this actually entire family is like the opposite of what you would expect someone to do in a horror movie because their immediate reaction is we gotta do fucking something right (laughs) no fucking around here shit's on uh but they save the sun and it's great because there's also a storm going on so the tree what stops the tree isn't the dad like Captain America punching it. It gets sucked up by a fucking tornado. Well, also, we didn't even mention that the tree is literally eating the sun. Yeah, he's the eating. That he, he, he's eating the sun, and then he gets sucked into a vortex that somehow only gets the tree. Yeah. But not the the two guys right next to the tree. No. And then everyone's kind of freaking out. And it's great because the son at this point, he's out of the tree. He's covered in sap because he's been literally in the mouth of the tree. And his re- his face and his reaction are very much like, I am clearly traumatized right now. I'm, I'm going through some shit. So the entire family uh, then starts to realize like, oh shit, there was a little girl in that bedroom <laughs> that we don't know where she is. Yeah, they just leave her to go fight, which, I mean, okay, to be fair, they did have to fight the tree, but maybe the mom could have got her, I don't know. But yeah. she gets, like, vacuumed into the closet. Yeah, there's, like, a, extremely a, a lot of stuff in that room. This is another scene that, like, is borderline kind of funny. Because yeah. the sheer amount of shit in that room that gets vacuumed into the closet while she's trying to hang on to not get pulled in, yeah. it's a crazy amount of things that that child owns uh but she gets vacuumed into the closet so hard that it rips apart her metal bed frame and they come inside after their victory against the tree and uh they're pulling all the shit out of the closet and the little girl is gone so they do not know where she is after getting vacuumed into the closet this also has maybe one of my favorite scenes of the movie because it is the most it is the most fucked up dark scene ever where they're inside they don't know what they they know their daughter is chances are in the closet and they put out everything in the room until finally the only thing that's left in there is a slumped over body over a blanket and the father finds it and then the mom find they both look and they go oh no and then the 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 older sister who's also in the family is kind of like she sees the lump body immediately starts crying because she knows like oh (laughs) 
God damn it. So then the father who's like, oh, honey, no. He pulls over the blanket, reveals that it was the clown that's also yep. been... <laughs> it's a and clown. It's a fucking clown. And they give uh, such a human reaction, because this is the same reaction I remember having once. It's like this relief of like, you were so sad two seconds ago, and now you're just relieved that the worst thing hasn't happened. One time my family lost our little kitty, and when we found her um, inside a shoe... We gave this exact same sigh of just like, oh, you son of a bitch. <laughs> How dare you put me through this? Was he in a shoe? Well, she was in a shoe because she was a pain in the... I think she was actually inside my backpack at the time, if I remember right. We looked everywhere in that fucking house for that cat. She was the most annoying. <laughs> she, she gave us such a heart attack. It was like literal hours. We were about to call a search party and the cops to find this kitty. Until finally we found her inside, like, my backpack or a shoe. I can't remember which. She was very small, but I digress. Um, so, yeah. Now the, the daughter is... Uh, they don't know where the daughter is. They know she's not right. in the closet, yeah. though. She got sucked into the closet. Well, I guess they don't know that she got sucked into the closet. They just saw all the shit in the closet, and they assumed mm -hmm. that was where she was. Um, but she's not there. But then um, when the TV is on and it's, it's on static, they can hear her talking. So she got sucked into the TV that she was talking to earlier mm. through the closet. Yeah. So now she's in the TV and they can kind of hear her. Um, and she's like very much like, ah, uh, like she already kind of sounds creepy ish at times. She's now full on creepy. -ish. She's also not aware where she is at all. Right. So some doctors come in whose names I do not remember. Uh, but they come to the house, and they determine that the the house has been invaded by a poltergeist. Uh, and I believe it was it's more than one. It is many poltergeists. What what is the plural? Is it poltergeist it is, or yeah, poltergeist? Yeah, poltergeist like is moves. the. It's a <laughs> it's like, plural. <laughs> it's like duck. Okay, it's also a plural. <laughs> it's like goose, geese, or something. Um, ghosties. I think, I think it's moose. I think it's a moose that is both a singular and a plural. There you go. It's like that. Uh, this is also a great bit of hit, like, just funniness of the setup, because they're treated like, like you said, like a TV show um, ghost hunter crew, and they're kind of going into the house and going like, oh, yes, we're going to use this device here to see if we feel any spiritual energy, and the dad's like, uh-huh, okay. Yeah, he he's yeah. not into it. Yeah, he though he's saying all this, and then he goes like, okay, can you show us the main problem of the room? Yeah, okay. And he opens the bedroom with the door, and it reveals the ghosts have completely lost their fucking mind, and everything in the room is spinning, and their reactions of like, because before this point, he's the 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 photographer is like, oh yeah, we caught a ghost moving a car, like oh I could only catch it on my camera. It was like moving a car slightly, little by inches over six hours, and I caught that on on camera. And the dad hears that he's like he gives like a very unimpressed like uh huh, okay. And he shows him the room. He shows the room. Everything is fucking flying. It is the very clearly ghost activity in the house. As they go through the entire house, even when they're talking to him, they go, they're telling him, like, we think you might have poltergeists. Like, the the ghosts are, like, moving shit inside of the, um, the kitchen that they're in. So they're, like, putting down the teacups <laughs> to be like, oh, really? We're haunted? Well, you mean this could end one day? And they're like, not if it was a pol poltergeist. This could go on for years. They go like, that shit sounds bad. I can't yeah, handle this. Yeah, guys, it turns out, are assholes. Shocker. Big assholes. <laughs> so he's talking to... Uh, they're just, like, going on with life. Like, with the daughter gone. And they don't know that she's in the TV. Um, and I believe the character that he's talking to, when he finds out that his house was built on an 80s cemetery... That's his boss. I don't know. That's his boss. Okay. Yeah. I don't know who that is. But uh, yeah, they find out that the house is built upon an 80s cemetery, which is where all his poltergeists are coming from. That's why he has so many yeah. geists. Yeah, that's why he has so many geists. And the thing is, is that this is the 80s, so it's kind of peak um, Reaganomics era, I guess is the right way of saying it. Um so when the boss tells him he's gonna, he's basically thinking that the reason he hasn't shown up to work is that he's going to quit his job. And literally, this one dude sells seventy-seven percent of the entire houses in the neighborhood. 
He's the reason they have so many. He, he so is much a realtor, money. remember? Yeah, yeah, realtor. Uh, so he shows him up top because like, how do you think about the view up here? He's like, man, it'd really suck for the people down there if they saw a bunch of houses looking up here. He's like, well, you don't have to worry about that because you're living here. And he gives like a huh, like, a, <laughs> like the last thing he was thinking about was like moving to somewhere else. Uh, and then that's when he tells him like he's he's like showing him the plot of land, and it's a very very funny shot because they're they're just up on him, and then they look to the right. And he's like, "What are you gonna do about that?" And it's like a like a cemetery. So he so the boss basically plans is like, "Oh, we'll just move him." He goes like, "Oh, dude, come on, don't do that." He's like, "No, it's okay. We've done it before." And then the movie has like a a music sting of like doom doom doom. He's like, "You've done it before." He's like, "Oh yeah, we uh, you know." Back in the 30s, we moved the thing, We or like a couple years ago, we moved in the 70s or something. We moved that from there and, you know, we moved the bodies. We put it somewhere respectful. He's like, yeah, I guess you guys did it respectfully. Um, I guess no one would complain about that. He's like, I've never heard. This is the, I've only ever had one complaint. And he's like basically saying like the only person who has ever complained about the treatment of the bodies was him. <laughs> Up until that point, nobody cared. Which... Sounds about right for yeah. the eighties. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it, it it certainly hits a certain. I'm like, yeah, okay. So, so capitalism is the problem here. <laughs> so what, what you're telling me? <laughs> Shocker. Big shock. Um, so yeah, that that's when they he kind of learns that there's okay. The cemetery was probably built on my house. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's where the geists are coming from. Uh, they bring in uh, like a. I guess she's like a medium. She talks to ghosts. She's like a she's a shaman king. They bring in yes. a shaman king. The, she's a clairvoyance. Is that what they call it? It's a clairvoyant. Okay. Yeah. No, she and called. She, the, he says clairvoyance because he tried. the The husband is very well. First of all, let's address an elephant in the room. This is the only time that this husband actually acts like an asshole because one of all the first thing he says the second she's out of earshot is like so. We get in help from Munchkin Land because this lady is a dwarf, uh, a tiny person. Yeah, which like this guy's not like the nicest guy ever, but he's not like a, he's like a eighties dad. So it was yeah. just a really weird moment of like, oh, fuck. yeah. Little I kind of I I take it from the fact that he hasn't been sleeping because of all the terrible shit going on in his house, but it's still like a very much of like a gut reaction of like, oh, like he immediately starts cracking small jokes, and it's like, oh, dude. <laughs> You were kind of okay up until this point. That. Yeah, you're you're an all right guy. You don't have to do that. Yeah. So he starts. To, he she asks him like, uh, "Where was the original fount?" She has like a very specific like southern accent. She has like a very specific accent, and she goes like, "Where did the original fountain take place?" And then the she asks the husband, and he doesn't say anything, and he's like closing his mind, and she's like. I'm I'm I am speaking to the living here, and he finally answers her. He's like, and the the wife's like, "What are you doing?" He's like, "I see she's full of shit. I tried to do it clairvoyance. Like if she's a clairvoyant. I tried to send it to my mind. She should have. I had like before he can finish his sentence, she's like, "I knew what you were saying. I just don't like trick answers." And at that point, he <laughs> shuts the fuck up and he goes, "Okay, I guess she's legit. <laughs> I was giving her bullshit." Uh, one moment. Give me a sec to pause, because my mom is calling me. All right. Go ahead. This is easier for me to edit that way. Okay. So we were at the... Uh, the psychic was explaining what was going on. Right? Yes. Psychic was explaining. Okay. okay. So the psychic starts telling them what's going on with their house, and this is where it got a little confusing, because it's just sort of like establishing... The- yeah. The rules of like the way the universe works, I, uh, it, but it's so also basically it's, it's also explaining it to like kids. Is like yeah, some... it's explaining it in a in a non satisfactory way, basically. Yeah. So she got sucked into the portal. There's a bunch of ghosts in there, and the ghosts can't go to whatever heaven is in the Poltergeist movies. I assume it's heaven because she they calls don't it even the know light. They're dead. Right. Uh, and so the little girl has a very strong life force that the ghosts want because it reminds them of being alive. Mm-hmm. So they 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 like that feeling of, of being alive, and so it prevents them from moving on to, I guess, the afterlife or whatever. So even though the girl is in there with them, she's not dead. It's just like some kind of alternate, 
I guess, purgatory dimension that she can be in but not be dead because she, she what does she call it? She calls it like a, a different consciousness or something. Yeah. Again, she she says a lot of shit in a way that kind it's of makes a lot of shit go, that means nothing. And she yeah. says it all really quickly. It's kind of the way the movie kind of go. I I also think it's really funny because she says all this, and I think the people who she's selling it to kind of go, uh huh, okay. <laughs> well, okay, everyone except for the mom, because the entire time that she the psychic is talking, they keep cutting back to the mom, and like slow zooming on her crying face, over and over again, yeah, and just with a different expression every time. <laughs> yeah, she's the one who's taking this most to heart. Uh, for everything. But yeah, so she she says that uh, there's ghosts and that's the, that's the deal. And that the, uh, the little girl is actually going to be able to help the ghosts move on. Except there is also evil in there uh, that she She's... calls the beast. Yeah, it tries to pretend to be just like her. It's not a little girl, though. It's a beast. Yeah, she says something like, uh, to her, it's just another child, but we know it's the beast or whatever. Yeah. Uh, and to and be fair, there, there, to ha keep... there is like one ghost that's like a lot of the ghosts seem to just be kind of playfully fucking around. There is one ghost that is clearly escalating way further than the others. Yeah, there's there's the one evil ghost and uh, the evil ghost is keeping the little girl in the other dimension so that uh, it can stop souls from going to heaven so they'll all want to stay by the little girl instead of pass on essentially and then she does a superhero turn to the camera and she's like let's go get your daughter <laughs> and then like looks up and like slow pan like fades <laughs> it's actually really good you know, to be fair, as much as this lady kind of got shit on in the beginning, she's maybe she's only in the movie for maybe ten minutes. She's one of the best parts in it. She's she so might be my favorite part of the whole movie. She has like she also has old person dog face. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, I do know. <laughs> she does Where she have has that. like her mouth is outlined by her the sag of her cheeks. So it looks like she has like a hound face. Oh dude, I love this character. It's yeah, she's the actor does an extremely well job, and then the character she builds, it's its like one of those scene-stealing characters can you can kind of, kind of go, where you go like, man, this character just makes the movie, and then you go like, they were in it for only five minutes. <laughs> this movie's two hours long, and they, they were fine. They didn't do anything? They just, they just talked for a little bit? Yeah. But there, there's like the, the delivery of the lines, everything about this, the way the character acts is also really funny in a real like, the way she, it feels like she, uh, she's not taking any shit from anyone. She's like very much like, she, she's like a weird mix of like, uh, she's like one step away from having her own TV spinoff where she's the main character, where she's helping other people. Yeah, that's a good way to, she's the Boba Fett for sure. Yes, yes, for sure. So yeah, they're they're gonna get the daughter back. Which um, so they find they find they find out that there's a portal where one where it exists where the daughter was taken and one where it's above the ceiling fan. They found this when the ghost hunter people were around them, like something was spewing out of it. So that's how they know there's two exits. Right, so so the closet is the way in, the roof is the way out. Yeah. And which they take that for whatever you will. Yeah. Right. That, they also that's the rules. That's the rules. They also try and like get carol ann to show her to get away from the, the 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 ghost which turns into this real feeling of like oh right the mother you try and call to her and she's not she's not answering it's like which one of you was sterner with the child and she and he goes like well the husband give you know my husband gives out the punishment he goes like, well that's not very fair because like listen we don't have time for your argument figure it out later you like with demand it in your voice say speak to me and he's like oh okay fine it's like all right carol ann speak and then she goes like threaten the spanker she doesn't speak he's like i would never hit my child and she goes like give him the spank <laughs> like very much like shut up i'm trying to help your goddamn kid now threaten her with violence <laughs> threaten to beat the shit out of your kid and to be fair, the second he, he the the second he threatens the spanking, uh, she she starts talking. Uh, so then oh they, they they finally get her away from it. Um, 
they go into the main kid's room. And this is where it kind of opens up the, the big light. Um, so there be- yeah, this is another famous scene that most people probably remember or at least have seen, even if they don't tie it to poltergeist necessarily. Yeah. Uh, they also test out their theory that if one thing enters one way, it can exit the other by throwing a ball. Um, with specific markings, and then someone waits at the bottom side of it to see if it actually comes through. They throw two balls, and it ends up happening. Uh, so then their next plan is to throw a rope through it, and then the, the rope ends up on the other side. So basically, there's a rope between dimensions at this point, and uh, their basic <laughs> their basic plan at this point is someone gets tied to the rope uh, and enters the <laughs> it enters it. And then they hopefully get Carol Ann and they can get her out. Right. <laughs> Which is the mom. Uh, yeah. Goes in on the rope. This is probably, this is also another great scene from her where he's like, so if shit is going bad around the house as the light is getting more intense. Um, and she says, she goes, the mom says like, I'm going in, out, going in for her. He's like, you can't do this. You've never done this before. And the mom goes, Neither have you. And then she goes, You're right. Put on the rope. <laughs> she immediately is like, Oh shit, you're right. I haven't done this. Put on the fucking rope. <laughs> the husband also protests, but they're like, the they're you literally the only other dude in this house. The ones at the bottom and ones at the top, you have to hold on to the rope. Because Literally, no one else could support you. None of the other ladies are strong enough to hold on to the rope if you're the one tied to the rope. Uh, so then, during all this, the husband and wife have a kiss. They say, I love you, because, to be fair, this is actually a situation where it's like, I'm about to see my wife enter a different dimension, and I don't know if she's coming. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if everything's going to be okay at the end of this. So they yeah, kind of. So she literally is. It's like. A in an action movie where the character is dangling from the ceiling by a rope. Mm-hmm. That's what she, that's what her plan is to go to this ghost world. It's a hell of a plan too. It's also a plan that uh, the little son mentions earlier. He's like, why don't we just tie a rope and like throw it into the other dimension and then get her. And then they go, huh? And then t- <laughs> like an hour later, that's totally what they end up doing. Also, it works pretty quickly and more or less flawlessly yeah this is also another part where the so the for the entire movie like the they've been talking about the light and in the beginning they say um avoid the light because they think that the light is entering into the afterlife um so they say like oh no avoid the light don't go into the light uh, and then when they're actually when the wife and the when the wife is going for the daughter this is when the little this is when the um the psychic is basically saying, like, go into the light. And then the husband goes, like, you just said don't go into the light. Like he's, at this point, angry with the rule change of the ghost. He goes, you just told him not to go into the light. And then her only response is, there is peace and serenity in the light. And then he goes, fuck this. And he starts pulling on the rope. And she goes, no, don't. It's too early. And then a big fucking, like... Uh, face comes out of the, the the porthole that he's where the husband is like tugging at um, during all this and it kind of like yells at him it kind of looks like a Ghostbusters ghost like a I don't know how, yeah a little bit it's like very bony it clearly looks fucked up when you see it and it's fucking huge as well uh, it also has kind of a quality of I guess um, you remember when Beetlejuice removes his face for like a brief second, and you see it from the yeah. other side. This kind of looks like to me what Beetlejuice's face would look like when they saw him. If that, like, that's how in my mind is like it. It just looks fucked up. Whatever this face is, it's fucked up. It's not good. Yeah. Uh, so continue on. They they save the 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 wife and the daughter. <laughs> They're safe. Yeah, they they come out covered in goop and ghost goo. Uh, and then Wad. you get maybe the best line from the psychic woman who's just like this house is clean <laughs> oh that's the that's the other thing from this movie that I quote, I quote constantly is this house is clean because it's great because she like she like dusts herself off a little bit and yeah, then like she, she like, make- brushes her hair 
Yeah, she, she like stands up straight and delivers the line as if she's like, "All right, my my work here is done." Like that's the episode closer. Um, it's really good. It's like, and then unfortunately, this is where the psychic leaves the the movie, which is very sad because I wish yeah, that there was a she, follow. She is gone, which is unfortunate. Yeah. Although one of my favorite scenes ever is is like right at the end. So, oh yeah, let, let's continue on. So right. they're they're. <laughs> At this point, the, it looks like everything is good, and you know that's bad because there's 20 minutes left of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know it's not clean yet because the movie's not even close to over yet. No, uh, <laughs> which is the funny thing is when I first saw Poltergeist for the first time, I remember she said, this house is clean. I'm like, damn, the movie's over? And I looked down, and there was 20 minutes left. I was like, oh. No, oh, it's, it's not. Not, 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 not even more close. So tell us what happens when everything's getting cleaned. Yeah, so, okay. So, uh, they want to leave because, of course, they do. Mm -hmm. Obvi obviously. Uh, and they start packing up to move, and they're going to. He's like, I'm going to quit my job, and we're going to move. And they're all. Um, I think it's the, the older sister leaves. Yeah, to go over boyfriend. The two, the two young kids and the mom. And uh, the beast comes back and wants the little girl again. And uh, the little boy is like fighting the clown from the closet. Yeah. Which is great. He, it's great. He, the, you've been waiting this entire movie for this clown to go fucking ape shit. <laughs> and it finally... the, obviously the clown was going to pay off later when they found it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, the... There's shit going on. I, I don't even nothing actually. I don't think anything physically attacks the mom. I think she's getting like ghosted. It's around really the house. it's really weird because like the ghost immediately starts pulling up. It's like it's like framed very creepy. It's kind of like, like do you know what I'm saying? Where it kind of like the 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 opening shot of it is like him lifting parts of her clothes, and it's like uh, it, yeah, it's. A little uncomfortable. It's it's weird. Yeah, it's very weird. Not if great. you if you ever seen Scary Movie two, they make fun of this scene with the <laughs> there's ghost sex during it, which is based off of this scene from Poltergeist, where it's like I don't like this. Like things have turned pretty fucking weird with this. Like I was in for a lot of it. This is another one of those things where it's like the movie very much kind of goes between campy and being like too realistic of like oh god. There's some real fucked up things happening here. Yeah, but it, it bounces a lot between like that's genuinely scary and then like what the fuck <laughs> like yeah. type thing. Like the ghost head that is scary, and then there's a lot of like the clown is camp. Yeah, very um, much camp <laughs> because yeah. the, the the clown face also changes when it's possessed, which is another really funny touch just to show you that it's evil now. <laughs> This evil clown doll now. Um, so they they attack the mom, and she's like getting attacked by skeletons. Um, I think they're like trying to drown her, and she gets away, and she saves the kids. And uh, coffins just start shooting out of the ground. Yes, they do. Uh, and the dad comes home, and this is the funniest shit in the whole movie to me. That's just so good. Is um, the the dad's boss is there. And the dad sees the house all it's all fucked up. There's like strobe lights in all the windows and shit and coffins are shooting out of the ground and skeletons are falling out. And he grabs the boss by the like the collar of his shirt. and He's like, ah, you, you said you moved the cemetery, but you left the bodies behind. You only moved the headstones. You and only moved it sounds, the headstones. Yeah. And then he's it sounds like he's supposed to be saying why, but it's just coming out like. Wah! Yeah, he's like, Wah! Wah! <laughs> it cuts to the boss because I'm sure it, he goes, Wah! 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 he's just shaking him by the collar. <laughs> you left the eyes, but you moved the headstones. Oh, you just moved the headstones. <laughs> it's the most like cry of anguish. I'm just like, Wah! <laughs> Yeah, he's just like... Wow. Wow. <laughs> 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 the, says time, nothing. the old man that plays the boss is just like giving him this dead face stare. 
<laughs> he's giving him a look of like, uh, yeah, I did that. <laughs> but also he's like, oh, no. Yeah, it's supposed to be like a look of realization. But it just it doesn't work when the guy's screaming, why? <laughs> and then they continue the confusion. The daughter comes for him. <laughs> and she gets out of the car and goes, what's going on? And the, the fucking funniest thing about this shot is that while she's screaming, you can see she clearly has a hickey. <laughs> and then I think, like, if something attacks the car that she came from, and at that point, the family just drives away. And, yeah, they and literally, <laughs> they literally get in a car, and the fucking house is, like, getting sucked into the evil dimension, and they're just like, they're gone. Yeah. Just leave. The, the the best shot is the boss who is not saying anything. The last thing you see of the boss is him putting both of his hands into his head and just going like, oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. like, <laughs> it looks, I, I assume he's supposed to be like crying heavily, but yeah. it looks like he's just like, oh man. <laughs> not again. <laughs> That's like the face you make after a long, shitty day at work, and you finally get home, and you just put your head in your hands, and you're like, oh. Yeah. Uh, th also, at this point, the entire neighborhood knows what's up. There's, like, no hiding it. There's also a really, f uh, this is the, uh, so the the, na the the wife calls the neighbor for help, and the neighbor comes, he's like, wow, wow, I'm helping. And then at this point, the neighbor's also with his wife, and they hear kids screaming, and what looks like, it kind of looks like the house is on fire, and the wife's going, please help me, please, please. And then, like, the neighbor's wife goes, no, don't go inside the house. And I, like, literally went, like, you bitch. <laughs> What kind of person goes, no, don't go save the children. Think of yourself. Leave the children. <laughs> Leave the children. I was like, oh, you fucking woman. How are you in this movie for 10 seconds and the worst character? Also, one of the best parts is the when the husband first gets home and he opens the door and he sees his wife and the wife's like, save us. And the door closes <laughs> and then he doesn't. No, at this point, he just has no idea what to and do then, anymore. And then after she begs him to save them is when he grabs the guy's collar and he's just like, why? <laughs> <laughs> In, instead of helping them. Oh, it's so good. There's the Also, during the entire... So when the clown starts attacking, the <laughs> light door opens up as well. And at this point, it, it, the, the girl is watching this and by the time... The, the the son at this point is also ripping apart the fucking clown. He he realizes that he has more strength than this like toy clown, it's so he a rips plush the, clown. It's yeah, a doll. So he rips the guts out of the toy, and then he notices like, oh, it's open. And then as it opens and it's happening again, it goes a close up to the girl and goes, no, not again. <laughs> it's like, like the family's like, oh no, she goes, no more, please, just end. So yeah, the family escapes, they go to a motel, and the movie ends as they kick the TV out of the motel, <laughs> and credits. Like a joke! They go to the motel, and they're like, we're gonna stay here, and the dad wheels the TV out onto the sidewalk. It ends like the it. it ends like the fucking Flintstones. <laughs> Oh, and then uh, another good part, which I, I don't know if you stayed to watch all the credits. So there's people singing during the credits. Um, and as you get closer to the end of the credits, they start laughing and getting replaced with ghost noises. So it's like the ghosts are singing the movie's end. And then at the end, they're like, <laughs> and the movie ends. I did not stay to the whole credits. I did yeah. not see that. It was, it was I a, wish I had seen that. Yeah, I thought it was a very nice touch. It's kind of kind of one of those things of like... Uh, you don't. I guess the after credit stinger has ruined fun credit jokes. Um, but that, I thought that was a very well done one for the eighties. Oh yeah, the, I guess the, you're right. The post credit scene makes it difficult to do that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, so that's Poltergeist. Um, this movie's fucking awesome. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah, it's hard to not like it. It. It's really, there's a lot of times where it's really dumb, like blatantly dumb, like not even 80s good way dumb, like it's just stupid. But hmm. also, it's really fucking good and funny and enjoyable, even when it's being stupid. 
Yes. It's also so crazy 80s. Like, the, the kid's bedroom has so much Star Wars shit. Um, just to mention some of them, there's a really good poster in there of Darth Vader. <laughs> it's just Darth Vader with his hands up. And then underneath it, it says, Darth Vader. <laughs> Look, the most, like, fucking... <laughs> Darth Vader. It's the dumbest thing to add into it, but it's like it's like building up. Oh, these kids love this kid loves Star Wars because he's a child of the eighties. And at one, when he's scared of the clown, he puts a jacket over it, and it has Chewie's face on it. Um, that's really good. There's a lot. There's a lot of just scenes where it's just like a family living a family life. At one, in the early on in the movie, uh, the family, the little girl's bird dies. Uh, Tweety. And the mom's response is, oh, Tweety, you couldn't wait for a school day. <laughs> like, you had to die now. <laughs> and uh, as the mom goes to flush it, the little girl finds it. And I, I would then describe the little girl gives it, like, the most bitchin'-ass coffin possible. She's, like, in tears going, like, here's something for if he's hungry. And she puts licorice in the coffin. <laughs> she puts, it's like, in case he gets lonely, it's a picture of the family. <laughs> And then he goes like, all right. And then they give it a proper burial. And as they're trying to bury the thing, the dog is almost immediately like wanting to rip it out of the ground. And the mom's like, no. And then she goes, can I have a goldfish? It's like the most quick like. Shh. All right, it's off. Can I, yeah, yeah. Can we? And then uh, the mom later on in the movie, she, I forget. She, she, it's like a callback to that joke is like, listen, honey, you're going to have to do that. Or else you, you don't want to prepare mommy her own special ca ca casket, do you? She's like, no. It's a very much like, oh, whoa, <laughs> what? It's a very dark jo joke to tell your children. Um, But I think I like the way that it kind of sets up of like, no, there should be respect for the dead. Um, And that's kind of why a lot of the things happen here. So the, the end sequence that happens it's obvious. Once he starts screaming, they didn't move the casket, so that's why their fucking yeah, house is they, haunted. They do not leave it up to the imagination as to no. why everything is going to shit. No, everyone's like, is it some kind of phenomenon? On, they're on a landline? It's like, no, capitalism said we're not moving the bodies, so they didn't move the goddamn bodies. They only moved the headstones. Wow. <laughs> why? <laughs> why? <laughs> why? But yeah, but the only parts I really don't like it are the parts where it's just like two eighties. Like there's a part, so the, oh, the there's the, a lot of parts where it's two eighties. Yeah, and I say it in a way that are like it didn't like overall impact my viewing, but I kind of went and goes like, oh yeah, this was made in the eighties. It's 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 that scene where the like the daughter's getting ready to go to school, who she's very clearly underaged, and as she's leaving, she gets catcalled by a bunch of dudes working on the fucking house, and. Like, her only response is to flip them off, but they're doing like, hey, baby, I'd like to do that. And then it's like, I was like, Lena's like, these dudes are clearly, like, fucking 40. And... <laughs> <laughs> yep. This and is then the 80s. I thought, like, the mom watching the daughter watching the daughter was her way of going, like, hey, cut that shit out. It's like, she's like, no, I'm defenseless against this. I'm just gonna watch. <laughs> There's nothing I can really do. This, this is just what's gonna happen now. Uh, damn it. So yeah, stuff like that. It's kind of it's like a little bits and pieces of it, but overall, it's like super well done. It there's some specific scares, like uh, so one of the one of the dudes who's a skeptic of the ghost group, who's like, I don't know, maybe there's a two way mirror. Like at one point, he's trying to say, he's like, you know, maybe the girl's voice is coming from somewhere else, and the the woman is immediately like, this is not this is not a hoax. <laughs> Would you like? There's clearly fucking ghost shit happening. <laughs> Uh, he chooses not to come back because when he went to go get food, they put mag that like the ghosts trick him into thinking he's, he's eating maggots. And then he has the fucking scary ass scene where he goes to look at himself in the mirror and he notices that there's a cut on his cheek. And then he pulls away his skin till there's nothing but a skeleton. And the crazy thing about this, um, this specific effect is that it's done very cheesy because when you. <laughs> When he starts touching his face, it's very clearly not him anymore. <laughs> like the yeah. it looks, uh, yes. it looks nothing like him. But then once the effect starts, you start going like, "Oh my god, how far are they get this? They gonna fucking take this?" And they take it far, like way too as, far. As far as yeah, it 
that is actually a moment for me that's like, oh, this was in the 80s. Because this yeah. is very much an 80s movie moment of just like staring at this shit for a really long time. It's like, Ugh. I'm like, okay, Toby Hooper. That, that was the one where you're like, listen, if this was uh, Chains, I like, and Chainsaw Massacre, it was mostly budle- bloodless. Not this one. I got Spielberg money back in me, baby. <laughs> We're coming full gross. Uh, yeah, no. It, I mean, other than that, though, and I mean, obviously, being very 80s is not necessarily a negative, but there's just a lot of stuff in it. The 80s was a very specific time for movies. Yeah. <laughs> there's a very heavy... There's a reason that Stranger Things is the way that it is, and it's because 80s movies just did kind of their own thing, and that was that. Yeah. Um it's very much the case in this as well. Yeah, it's it's one of those things of like the only people who would really be turned off to it are people who are like, sometimes I just can't handle the eighties too much. And I go, Okay, that's fine. You know, you know, I, I understand <laughs> for the most part. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The eighties have very specific things to say, and it's up to you how interested you are in hearing what they have to say. Yeah. Yeah. And another kind of uh elfin in the room on this one. Those were real dead bodies at the end. The the caskets, the, those were actual corpses. That they... Oh my god. Yeah. Um, there's actually what been the a fuck? long running rumor that this movie has cursed because a lot of the people who worked on it ended up dying. Obviously, we kn- me and you are not the kind of person to... We're not going to debate on the realness of curses, but there is something fucked up about the fact that they used real bodies for that ending scene. <laughs> Those are real fucking people that you see at the end. Um, and it's just fucked up. And it's fucked up way beyond what you could think of. It's I think they did something similar. Do you remember? Have you ever heard the original opening of Pirates of the Caribbean in Disneyland where they used real skeletons? No. Yeah, they... Why are so many people using human bodies for this shit? <laughs> I don't know, but it's one of those things of like, I guess people were just, I guess, I don't know how the fuck they find these bodies, but there's like a good amount of things where you go like, oh yeah, they used real bodies for this. And I'm like, what do you mean they used real bodies? They they wanted to get the most realistic looking skeletons. So they thought like, let's get actual skeletons. And it's like, no one stops somewhere in between there to say, maybe let's not, (laughs) maybe let's not do this. Nobody yeah, I remember. Like, don't do that. Yeah, don't do that. It's one of those things where it's uh, it, occasionally there's some movies that are like they go a little bit too far. <laughs> Using real bodies is maybe going a little bit too far. And my, if I can make a stand right here, Zen, can I don't know if you can join me in this. No more real skeletons in movies. <laughs> Let's. Stick. Yeah, you know what? I'll, I'll co-sign. <laughs> <laughs> From now on, please no more uh, skeletons of actual humans in films as dummy props, please. Yeah, no more. Uh, this is a la- this isn't a, this didn't happen in a movie, but this totally did happen. Where a fair had a hang up. Um, you know Skeletor, the the guy from He Man, the, the He Man villain. Yeah, yes, he was based off of a. Um, a carny ride where it was like one of those spooky shows. The creator of Skeletor remembers as a kid, a uh, skeleton came down from the ceiling and he looked at it and he's like, he got traumatized. He's like, it was the most scary fucking thing I ever saw. And then years later, it turned out like the reason he was so fucking scared is because that was an actual real ass skeleton of a person, <laughs> of, a, of a person from like the old West times who, who was hanged and killed. And then, Somehow his body was used as a prop for like a shitty <laughs> horror thing. And they didn't realize it till years later where they're like, I think that's real. And then someone said, no way. And then they did testing and it's like, this is a real person. And then they were like, holy shit. <laughs> oh, oops. We're not getting the deposit back on the skeleton. Those were an interesting time. Yeah, they were. Where awful things keep happening. Yes, but you can watch Poltergeist. I, it's a good ass movie, and I suggest watching it. Uh, Toby yeah, Hooper, don't, don't boycott Poltergeist over no. the apparent actual corpses in it. 
No, no, it's too late. Toby Hooper, Toby Hooper has already suffered by the fact that no one wants to give him credit for this movie. <laughs> that they all yeah, just want to give it this movie. That's his curse is that he doesn't even get the movie. Yeah, and it's it's a uh, it's it's my own personal. I have this beef with Hollywood where they don't actually treat anyone who makes a horror movie serious, unless it's actually like. I think the only one they've taken in recent days is probably Jordan Peele, which I'm glad that they kind of do. Um, but I feel like it's also because Get Out had a message that was of, a, you know, of racial variety. So they kind of were like, well, if we ignore this now, even though we hate horror movies, it's going to look real bad on us. So we're just going to, you know, <laughs> treat him with the proper respect he deserves. Unlike every other horror movie director who ever makes a good movie where we just shit on them for the remainder of their life. Yeah, horror is one of those things where, like, <clears throat> it's like animation, where it's, like, treated as the second class of uh, filmmaking. Yeah. It's very sad, but doesn't stop them from being good. They can hate all they want. That's not going to stop this movie from being awesome. Facts. <laughs> Absolute facts. Yeah. And also don't watch any of the other sequels after this, because I don't think Hooper's no, involved no, no, in no, 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 no. Just both no, guys one. Just the original one. Yeah. Oh boy, that's a hell of a movie, Zen. That's a hell of a movie. That's a and we don't we don't ever review that man screaming in that old man's face. <laughs> it's really a very it's it's there's a lot of just quotable good scenes in this movie. That's definitely one of them, especially because when you hear the acting of it, who fucking plays a dad in this one? Let me look up his name because it's like someone who's like Craig T. Nelson. There you go. Who also was in... <laughs> he was the monster in Flesh Gordon. Everyone knows. Ah, of course. <clears throat> uh, shit, he's, he was in Turner and Hooch. He's been in a lot of stuff. He's I think he's one of the... Oh, oh, he plays Bob in fucking Incredibles. That explains so much. Oh, really? Yeah, he's Mr. Incredible. I was like... There was like a, a part of his voice where I'm like, why does it sound so familiar to me? It's That's because pretty he plays... funny because he's the suburban dad in this movie too. Yeah, everyone does a fantastic job in this one. Um, definitely worth a watch. Uh, as most movies we talk about in concession stand, except for maybe, uh, except for maybe Mummy Returns, I think is the only no Dragon Ball Evolutions. <laughs> yeah, we, we did do Dragon Ball Evolution. Yeah, we That's did do Dragon. Skip. That's that's a biggest skip, but you know, spooky season is upon us. I suggest watching Poltergeist. I yeah, absolutely. You'll, you'll enjoy Poltergeist. If you like horror movies or funny shit, you'll enjoy Poltergeist. I don't know how funny it was intended to be at the time, because it's an 80s movie, so you can never tell. Yeah. But it's it's funny, and it has some genuine creepy stuff in it. Yeah. Uh, I think there, you know some parts of it are intentional, but I also think Toby Hooper's kind of a weird fucking dude. <laughs> Have you ever seen Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2? Uh, the movie uh, where he says... one. Uh, it's the direct sequel to Chainsaw Massacre 1. So after he made Chainsaw Massacre 1, he made the second one, I think like 10 years later, in the 80s. And his exact wordings were, I'm never going to top that movie. If I try and do another movie like that, it's never going to live up to it. So I'm just going to go full uh, parody. I'm basically making a parody of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So if you ever see the poster for it, it's the Breakfast Club poster, but with all the characters from Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. And it went, when it was released, people fucking hated it. Because they were like, "This, what the fuck did you do? That doesn't su- Man, that was back when filmmakers just did shit. Shit just mm-hmm. happened. The, the last of those filmmakers were George Lucas, and look what look what we did to him. Yeah, we, <laughs> we broke old George. Yeah, we, we broke old George. He's like, well, you know, I'm fine, fuck it. I'm going to give it to Disney. See if you fucking assholes like it after that. Huh? Now you want Jar Jar back. You ain't going to get original Jar Jar, though. My version of Kylo Ren would have been Kylo Ben. Would have... <laughs> It was way more fucked up if the dark side kept the Ben Solo. <laughs> I love Ben. <laughs> it's his only change. It's changing Kylo Ren to Kylo Ben. <laughs> uh, that's a, you know how there's currently a, a you know the Schneider cuts being made. What if we oh, yeah, 
What if we what if we petitioned to have the George Lucas cut for the for the current trilogy of Star Wars movies? Oh my god, the sequel trilogy Lucas cut? The Lucas oh, Yeah, the no. Lucas cut. I need that in my life. It's like, well, guess who's but daddy's back? Apparently everyone wants George back in the in director's chair. Let's Old go. George back on the saddle. In this in this scene, Snoke's gonna backflip like fucking crazy. Got to backflip four times, flip off the roof, pull out a comically sized lightsaber, start fighting Ray with it. This is where we reveal that he actually has access to the the great force weapon called the twenty foot lightsaber. It's just a really <laughs> big fucking lightsaber. It's like the the giant sword, the the the, the Bagoran sword from that Link uses. <laughs> <laughs> big Goron. <laughs> the the, the Goron saber. <laughs> <laughs> oh god the lucas cuts <laughs> that's that's what of... <laughs> we need to do it before old georgie boy just leave it gets mandalorian armor for no reason at some point halfway through he's like yeah no that's pretty cool that's pretty good everyone's oh, yeah. been waiting for that yeah that's why we can tie mando into the greater universe star wars <laughs> and see that he's good friends with everyone here at some uh, point, Anakin would just be in the movie. Um, just, the, the the funny thing is, is that I, I, I insert Hayden Christensen's Force Ghost into the background, of you, like a bunch of different shit. Oh, that'd be so good! That final scene where she's like, <laughs> "You okay?" So you remember how in Revenge, uh, Revenge of the Clones, Attack of the Clones, it ends with like Yoda showing up and fighting. Um, yeah. imagine the end of Rise of Skywalker the Rise of Skywalker is actually he returns from the dead as a force ghost and he fucking gets a, a ghost lightsaber like the same intro that Yoda has where he just like slowly walks in and he's like I'm Vader he's like no I, it's Skywalker and he looks to the camera <laughs> and says it's time for me to rise and he fucking goes and attacks the Emperor Everyone knows that as long as you live, my job's not done here. And he, he goes, fuck. <laughs> he slow walks in and you hear him do the Vader breathing. And everyone's like, oh my god. And then it's Hayden Christensen turns the corner. <laughs> he that's removes the master. <laughs> oh, that'd be so good. And then at that point, he also summons. So this this is the ultimate fan fiction now in the, in the Lucas cut where he summons. Um, He's like, it's not enough for just Skywalker. And then that's when you hear the heavy breathing. And he's like, Darth Vader's on the other side now. And so he's bringing both the light and the dark to bring balance to the force to fuck up this man. They're both individual force ghosts. <laughs> yeah. That's what, that way we can have James Earl Jones back in the movie. You know, one last time. For, for the Lucas cut. <laughs> for the final. <laughs> Specifically for the Lucas cut. I wanted to come back for the Lucas cut. I believed I believed in George once. <laughs> I've been waiting. I've been waiting for the Lucas cut for a long time. I have a, I have him on speed dial, Georgie boy, waiting for that call. <laughs> Did the, that's the same way I imagine George Lucas got him to return for uh, uh, Return of the Jedi, where they added the no sound effect to Darth Vader. Uh, he was just like minding his own business, and George was like, hey. I think we can tie this movie in better if you know instead of being silent. You brilliant bastard! <laughs> scream this no. Yeah. What? What do you? How do you feel? Well, it's beautiful, George. <laughs> Let me get back. In. I'm driving over there to Lucasfilm right now. He just One drives himself in. Let's do it. I just want to scream no. That's the only thing. I believe in George's vision, goddamn. That's why he never showed up again. Because <laughs> he didn't. Because <laughs> the, oh, the that's, Lucas. That's why they didn't have any Vader references in the other ones. Because it wasn't George anymore. No, he only believes it. Get it. Let's get it going. The Lucas cut. Zen, you, we can tell that this is actually a concession stand because we have somehow segued into George Lucas. We always do. I don't know what it is. But... It's not. Yeah, it's not an official. Uh, concession stand unless we have a giant giant the funny thing is is that we have a an episode that i can't find anymore where we talked about the the prequel trilogy with um damn it we had someone on that for that one 
We had someone else. Do you re- do you remember? No, I don't, I don't even remember us talking about the prequels. Twenty twenty has been so fucking long. It was I don't with, even remember what happened anymore. I, the funny thing is, is that I know his real name, and I don't want to say his real name. Um, he was a mod with us. The dad, C C C C C C. Conal. Conal. There you go. We did it with Conal, and it's probably the best episode that's never going to be released because I can't find it. It was so good because we were literally like talking about all three of them. It's like almost two hours long. So I tried to Google it uh, mm-hmm. to see if maybe it would come up on my channel or something, just in case. And apparently the concession stand is the name of the little hut that Ray goes to to trade uh, electric parts for food. Holy shit. That was that was their way of trying to buy us back then. That was Yeah, that was them trying to, to bring us in. If only we knew. If only we knew. <laughs> that one's a trip, too, because I think that's right after um, Force Awakens and not any of the other ones. So it's kind of like a very much of like... It really spiraled. Yeah, kind of before it kind of ca- turned into camps of like, either you love this or you don't. And it's like, oh, God. History repeats itself again. <laughs> can't do this another. <laughs> I can't handle it anymore. I'm not strong I, I enough. Up on, I, I YouTube searched it, and apparently one of our episodes is about Jaws, and then just talking about George Lucas <laughs> on Twitch. <laughs> that, that, that's the last episode we did. That, I think... <laughs> I'm telling you, man. One day, we should actually just do that Star Wars one, but not until we actually are good and ready for it. Um, this is the, we, we need to wrap up this show real quick, so why don't you tell everyone what to look forward in the next Concession Stand episode? Yes, coming soon on the concession stand for Spook... Spook is it Spooktober? Spooktacular? Spooktacular. Scary time. For scary time, it is Night of the Living Dead, full-on 1968 version. None of these remakes. No. Classic Romero. Speaking of Snyder, then he'd make the remake of that one? Did he? he? I think he remade Dawn, didn't he? Snyder or uh, maybe uh, you yeah, know what? Zach Snyder did one. Did he I remember because he did Fast Zombies in in The Living Dead, and it was like a whole big kerfuffle because they're like they're not supposed to run. How dare you, he Snyder, did, ruin? He did Dawn of the Dead, apparently. Yeah, the, that was the remake. That, okay, so that's that. Dawn of the Dead is a sequel to Night of the Dead. Not doing any of those. Night of the Dead, the original. Orig- it, you know who should have done it? Obviously, uh, George Lucas. <laughs> And in the background here for the zombies, I kind of want an ATST in the back, <laughs> just kind of patrolling the area. With the zombie that attacks them in the beginning, is just like one of those aliens that Sebulba was from the first Star Wars movie. <laughs> oh, this makes it. On his hands. There's oh, a. Oh god. Okay, we can't start again, or we're gonna just start going back through. George we are. Lucas. We'll we'll save our George Lucas zombie movie for the next episode. So check that out. It's in the public domain. You can literally find it on YouTube. Um, that's how I'm gonna watch it. So thanks very much for joining us again. Uh, hope you liked it. And until next time, remember always support your local concession stand. It's been a year. I still fucking remember. Woo-hoo. But you have got this on lock. I would never have remembered that. <laughs> I know, that's how much I care, Zen. (laughs)